Hello, everyone. Welcome to Omar podcast of the Athletic School. Uh, today, our guest speaker, Cecilia Leaves. She's the president of the Soccer Visa Football Club in Costa Rica and also the CFO. So, Cecilia, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me today. It's exciting. Awesome. Uh, so, to begin with, I want to hear about your story, story a little bit, um, your pathway to become the president of a, a soccer team in, in Costa Rica. So I um, was born and raised in Sweden and uh, didn't play football. I moved to the U.S. when I was 18 years old and um, went to school and um, was really working in a completely different field in finance and um, had my own business for quite some time as well. And um, I stumbled upon getting into the soccer industry in the U.S. in 2016 when I was volunteering for a nonprofit organization in our local town. Um, I met Soccer Visa's um, founder, Joe Francello, and we were working on a marketing project together. And that's how we kind of started to build up Soccer Visa FC. Um, as a little girl, as a little kid, I always said, I definitely want to be a president one day. I have that mm -hmm. true entrepreneurial, um, mindset and, uh, mm -hmm. love challenges. So it's, it was something that was, um, not too unfamiliar, but it was definitely something that I saw as a great challenge. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, my major here is sports management. And yeah. when people think about my, ask me about my end goal, I think of being a president of a, a soccer team is literally the dream goal for anyone that is going to a sports management uh, side. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's awesome. And so, so tell me a little bit about the soccer visa, the mission. Um, I, I really like the idea and I want you to share that a little bit. Sure. Okay, so Soccer Visa was created for young players to have some type of pathway in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, with holding combines all around the U.S., but also a few combines around the world. And um, Joe, who founded it, played professionally for 10 years in Europe, is an Italian, um, really didn't see any um, pathways in the US due to the system being the way it is. No promotion, no relegation. How do you get scouted? So the mission behind Soccer Visa has always been to find the undiscovered talent, um, players that are really falling through the cracks of the system, whether you're playing D3, D2, or D1, a club in Europe or Central and South America, when they're scouting to get the best talent, they really don't care about where you went to school. Mm -hmm. um, so Soccer Visa is that company that really gives opportunities and chances for the underdogs. Mm -hmm. The underdogs that maybe never even played academy, uh, never even had the financials to play travel um, and um, just to get people an opportunity. I, I would say we provide the tools so players can have the possibility to go and play pro. And we placed quite a few players in the pro game. I think now uh, since 2012, we're over 400 players um, who have received pro trials and contracts. That's, that's different us. levels, different levels, obviously, because right. there's always, you know, you got top league in Portugal, you got third division in Sweden. So there's obviously, um, you know, so many different levels to the sport. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, so, I mean, I can see that Soccer Visa, the, the biggest business is kind of like helping the players achieve the next level, right? But yes. you, guys, you guys are actually doing, uh, making history right now, right? You're going to the playoffs and uh, almost getting the promotion as well. Um, so, like, uh, why, why 
why is that? You know, if you bring players that they are not even thinking about staying there forever and making a career as soccer visa, how can you guys achieve such good results? Um, so being down here in Costa Rica, um, you being from Brazil, right? South America, you understand that the culture in these countries are very passionate and we did fall in love with it back in 2018 um, and saw something different down here. So when we first arrived in 2018, we had you know, our development center, which are 25 to 30 guys they stay here for a month, for three months, for six months, and really develop as a player. We work with them hands-on, one-on-one. Um, and um, we always wanted to have a pro team. So having a pro team back in the US would not really make sense due to the fact that there's no promotion and relegation. So we were fortunate to have a team um, kind of land in our lap and um, working really, really, really hard to be able to, you know, have this team start from the bottom, start from scratch, building it from the ground up. We have scouted players in Costa Rica from the jungle, no shoes. We've given them opportunities and more so, I think, teaching them what the real value to being a professional player is. Um, so it is definitely exciting. We have had our pro team for three seasons. Okay. First season was a little bit of COVID mm -hmm. and then our, now we're in our second year and I can't tell you it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Last year we went to the playoffs and we lost. We're in our second tournament this year and, uh, we're continuing to climb and it has to do with I think a lot of hard work and dedication to to the sport, but also you got to believe in people um, that no one else believes in. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah, and and I think everything you you mentioned it comes down to, to creating a culture, uh, and I also think that it comes down to to the management, you know, when it and it comes back to you, um, and then. The other day, I was actually, I had a class that we were talking about female in sports. Um, and then I brought it up some cases uh, about soccer, football in general. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at clubs right now, teams that are doing really good, they have a lot of females involved. You know, if you look yeah. at Bayern, Bayern Munich, uh, Chelsea, uh, if you go to Brazil, we have Palmeiras. Uh, they all have females in sports right now. Um, so... I want to ask you about what the challenge of being a female in a sport that, at least for me in Brazil, it was always considered to be a, a man's sport, a guy sport. In the U.S., I feel like it's a little bit better and people are a little bit more open-minded, but I'm sure you had some challenges in Costa Rica. And, you know, if you go to other countries, it, it might be the same. So tell me a, bit, a little bit about the challenge to, to get there and to gain respect a little bit from the players, from other people. Um, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, yeah. it's a huge challenge to be a female in this sport as it's male dominated. I think it's amazing to see other females step up to the plate on the larger scale and larger, um, clubs. Um, I'm one of the very few female club owners in this sport, and I have a mission to become the biggest, you know, for us. We are in the third division, but our goal is to really reach first division and be in the playoffs of CONCACAF. And I think as a female, there's a lot of hesitation from, from management in this industry um, because it's male dominated. Um, players, they really um, take me in as they listen a lot to what I have to say. Um, but you have to have a thick skin, you know, you can't really, um, I guess, give in to the male domination of a sport, because if you look at the female football side, right, especially in America, they are, they got two titles, they're dominating the soccer scene, in a sense, 
Um, so I think the females, it's, it's really on the rise. And I definitely am one of those people that I do want to get acknowledgement for, for um, females. And I'm working hard to really, um, what's the word? Like to make people understand that, yeah, that people need to understand that even though I work with a lot of guys, um, I'm steering the ship in the right direction due to knowledgement and, and uh, research and, and you wanna be the best, you gotta work hard. So I don't think it matters if you're male or female that way. Yeah, um, so what are some advices that you would give to, uh, to young women listening to us right now and then they kinda wanna go to the same pathway that you did? Because in my class, we have a lot of girls that they want to work in the sport industry but because mm. sometimes it's so tough that they say like well i'm just gonna go do something else you know i can probably make more money i can probably uh i don't need to go through all of that uh, so what are some things that you would tell them so they can is it taking initiative or what is it i i think that uh, as a girl you have to stand your grounds mm -hmm. and don't ever give up on the beliefs you have to do something special, whether that's being a coach, whether that's being a president, whether that's being part of a management. Um, if you look at agents, right? Agents in this industry, you do not have a lot of females mm -mm. Um, because you know males have a tendency of just taking over the scene. But for anyone that is really trying you really have to just stand the ground and believe that you are contributing to whatever club that you're working for, or if you're starting a club by yourself, or if you're in the management, you are adding value as much as anyone else that is sitting around the table kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, and those things, they go for men as well. Uh, you know, of I think- Of course. Yeah, adding, adding value, it's something that I, I like, I love and I think people forget a little bit about it, you know, because when you were on a team, you know, I, I play soccer my entire life. And then people think, people complain a lot that they are not playing because of this or because of that. But then we forget to ask ourselves like, yeah, but what are you adding to the team? You know, like, are you adding yeah. value to the team outside the soccer field, you know? Yeah, so, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big statement. And I think people forget about it um, whatever it is, whether it's um, in business or in sports, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand mm -hmm. where value is who you are and that's what you're contributing to um, in any situation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when it, when it comes to, to leadership, and I, I love talking about leadership because I feel like uh, if we look at history and see that people that left a mark in this world, uh, they were leaders. Um, so when it comes to leadership, it, it comes down to decision making, uh, problem solving. Um, so I want to ask you about a, a little bit of that, you know, when when there is a problem that comes up um, and there's a decision that that you need to make, is there any process that you that you do before you do something like that, before you make a big decision uh, or how you handle conflicts um, within the club, you know, how, how, how does that work for you? Um, I think as a true leader, you have to be very unique mm -hmm. to the people that work with you. I never really look at staff or coaches or players as they work for me I think that as a leader they work with you because they are the ones that are contributing to have the success as well um, I think a true leader knows how to take care of critical situations so if something a decision needs to be made you have to quickly kind of put it together and dissect it in a sense where, okay, how do we do it? When do we do it? How do we go about doing it? And I think that's something that um, critical thinking is, is, a, is a true leader, um, but you have to be really unique and um, 
don't always give get credit you know you can't just sit on the throne and take all the credit for other people's work you have to really see who has added their sense of skills mm -hmm. um, a leader doesn't know everything and you have so many other people that adds that um, to any organization love that love that um so uh going back a little bit about the soccer visa because i feel like a lot of people will want to go to you guys after the podcast um so how how does it work uh for a player that wants to play for soccer visa do they reach out to you to you guys do you guys reach out to them um and other questions is are you guys planning on having a women's team as well sometime in the future or is it not something that you guys plan at all so okay so in terms of a women's team i've always been wanting to have a female team due to many reasons um now I'm a positive thinker. We're in the playoffs. We are going to get up to second division. And part of that, you need to have a female team. So obviously it's in the works and it's something that we are speaking about and we want to add to our club at the same time as we're adding youth teams. So that's one thing. Um, but if a player wants to come into our development center down in Costa Rica, um, we do have players fill out an application either on social media, TikTok, Instagram, or on our website, and then they add their highlight video. We're very, very thorough when we go through the process of a player wanting to come down here. Mm -hmm. um, we want to give the best opportunity to someone, but also when the player comes down here and stays here, trains every day, um, play games against professional teams, the level really have to be a good level. Because if we go and play other professional teams and get smacked around by, you know, 10-0, obviously those clubs are losing integrity of what soccer visa is all about. Mm -hmm. um, so when a player really wants to come in, we do an interview process with them. And then we kind of figure out what works best. Is it to come down and train with us for a month and kind of get so we can see what level? Mm -hmm. Or is it to come in and directly get scouted if the highlight video is very, very good? Um, we do invite clubs from our you know, long network of years that we've built up and, and get them down here so we can um, have them take a look at the players. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, good. I, I'm sure people uh, will, will reach out to you guys. Um, all right. So a question that I always ask um, our, our guest speakers is how uh, you define success. That is it's a tricky question. Probably, yeah, it's probably the trickiest question you can ask someone because we measure success so differently as humans. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know, the one word that always pops up for anyone that wants to have success is you have to be consistent with your grind. You cannot ever take, um, lay back and take some time off to be successful. So you always have to stay on top of your um, grind. Um, now, it's very easy to sometimes fall out of that because as a true entrepreneur, you wear many hats so your consistency sometimes gets to be a little bit rocky due to you know doing a lot of things within the company but i do think that the measurement of success really comes from your um, view on how where you want to go i think it's very important to have a view of how you see yourself on a three-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan, and working towards that, mm -hmm. that is gonna bring you success. I think it's important to always stay the course. Sometimes you have to wiggle around and things happen and the road gets bumpy, but success will come by 
you kind of having your mission. Um, like for me, I want to become the biggest female in this industry. Um, and that might be in 10 years or 20 years, but I do always had that in mind for myself to, to, to become something different and add value to other people's lives. So you can, so others can take a look at it and say, wow, she did something different and look what she did to make a change for other people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. Um, and I'm crazy about understanding people's mindset and, and how they think, you know, and what, what kind of insights I, I want to take because the way that I, I started athletic school is because I started reading a lot um, to improve myself. And then mm -hmm. I started thinking like, man, I need to share this with people. people. People don't know about those things, you know? And then the idea of the podcast came, came up and then this is almost like a lesson for me, you know? And sure. so like, of course I'm doing for my followers as well for the audience. But for me, I take a lot of insights and like of every day I change my definition of success a little bit, you know? And I think that's okay. You know, as you mentioned, like our goals change it and our consistency uh, changes a little bit as well. So I think it, um, it, it's, it's great to, to have people like you come here and, and tell me uh, how their mindset works. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Um, any, any, any podcast, any books that you would recommend to people to read? And it can be anything from sports to business to anything you like. I think so for me, I'm extremely busy, right? So I used to love holding a book and sit up, crawled up on the couch and read, but I don't really have the time. So I think podcasts for me is like the way to go. You can listen in the car, in the shower, you know, if you have five minutes over, you know, here and there. Um, and I love to listen to people's way of thinking. So um, Gabby Bernstein is one of my probably favorites. She has a podcast called, I believe it's Hello Gabby. Um, and it just talks about mindset and to stay strong and to work on yourself to reach your ultimate goals, because I think that's what it comes down to. Um, if you get too hooked up with other people, if you get to bo be bothered of what other people, this is a lonely, lonely road to be a true entrepreneur and do something very special and different. Um, and she talks a lot about that to keep your focus and mindset. So I, I love listening to her. Awesome. I'll, I'll definitely need to check that one out. Um, Cecilia. Thanks so much for, for joining me. Um, like I said, I, I think uh, people will benefit a lot from that, from players to entrepreneurs and, and business people. I think they, they will love that. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. Good luck well, uh, in the rest of the season. I'll be hoping and cheering for you guys. So. Well, thank you so much for having me and uh, best of luck to you too. Thank you.